So in this talk, I'm going to try to define a notion of differentiation for a function of a vector variable. Now, f is a function. The values are still real numbers. So the values of the function are still scalars, but the inputs are vectors. So it, you can think of this just as a function of many variables. Now, the problem is, I want, well, I want to define what it means to take the derivative of such a function. But it's not totally clear what it would mean to take the derivative because this is a function of multiple variables. So, so actually there is a correct notion of derivative, but the derivative turns out not to be a, a, a scalar function. Let me just write scalar. The scalar function. The derivative turns out not to be a scalar function, but itself a vector value function. We'll do what the derivative is at a point. So the derivative at a point C. So that says C is a point. in the domain of f and in fact c has to be in the interior of the domain so the f should be defined around c. are we here hmm. what do i mean by that yeah what do i mean by saying f is defined around c hmm? what do you mean yeah above radius. Yeah, so f should be defined in some ball of some positive radius about c. So it's, def it's not defined at c, it's defined around c. Okay, so now what would we want to do in order to, to take the derivative? Well, we want to take a limit of a difference quotient, but that's not quite possible. So, so I'm just going to tell you what the answer is. The thing is, I'm going to define the derivative as what we call the gradient vector. So gradient vector of f at c is denoted you wouldn't guess it, but it's denoted this thing at c. And this is called nabla. Okay, now we haven't defined it yet. So let's try to define it. Well, what would the what would our naive attempt be if you want to take it as a limit of a difference quotient? What would a naive attempt be? So a naive attempt would be something like let me get it here. Mm -hmm. Would be something like I expect approaches C. Well, I was secretly hoping that's not a naive approach, <laughs> because that's my approach. <laughs> right. Yeah, that. but okay, what's the problem with doing this? What's the numerator? This is just a number. Mm -hmm. What's the denominator? It's a vector. Can you divide something by a vector? Maybe. No, you cannot divide <laughs> things by vectors, right? So that's a problem. This is a naive thing you would like to do, limit of a difference quotient. Now, is this there in the picture? Mm -hmm. Okay, but it, it doesn't quite work. So what do we do instead? Well, we go back to the epsilon delta definition of derivative, which you you may or may not have seen, but but I have a separate video on that, and so you can you can look at that. Here I'm just going to recall that. By the way, here I'm using a slightly different notation from the one in that video. In that video, I used x naught as the point at which I'm calculating the derivative. Now I'm calling it c because uh, because I'm calling it c here. I don't want to do subscripts confused matrix. Okay, so let's say, so, okay, so f prime c is defined like this, right? Mm -hmm. And to say that this limit is L, what does that mean? Well, it means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta greater than zero, such that for all x within delta of c, but not equal to c, we have what? So, so the, the, the original thing, let me just write the original version of this, was fx minus f of c over x minus c minus l is less than epsilon. 
that's what you would get if you directly applied the epsilon delta mm -hmm. definition, right? Mm -hmm. However, you can simplify that, simplify this, and get the thing on top here, right? How do we get the thing on top? Multiply the absolute value of x minus c. Multiply everything by absolute value x minus c. Okay, and you get you get exactly this. Now, what's the advantage of having it in this form? What do we not have when we write it in this form? We don't have quotients. We don't have division, right? And so this form is actually seems to be more amenable to 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 generalizing to vectors because we don't have division, but we still have have a problem here. We have multiplication. Okay, so that's something that needs to be fixed because you cannot. Do, I mean, what do we mean by multiplying vectors? You have to rethink what that means. So, so the gradient of f, oh by the way, this is called the gradient of f. I guess it's, the, it's my title, but I should say it here. It's sometimes called grad f. Okay, so it's a gradient vector of f at c, but sometimes when people say it quickly, it's a grad f of c. You can also call it nabla f, that's a symbol. Okay. So, so this is defined as is the vector v. So where, when, where is this vector living? It's living in the same vector space as x. So if x is a vector with five coordinates, then v will also be a vector with five coordinates. Is a vector is the vector v such that what holds? Well, we just have to imitate this definition. So for every yeah for every for every epsilon greater than zero mm -hmm. there, there exists exist delta greater than zero that these parts will remain the same but because these are just describing the set of the radius of the various things such that or by the this st is such that are we both captured yes okay such that such that x is with for the, all x with yeah with zero the, less than hmm? what does this what does this mean in the uh, vector version the distance between x and c is Less than, delta, less than delta, but it's not equal to c itself. But basically, we're saying x is delta close to c, but not equal to c itself. Okay. So you should have watched before this, or you should be aware at any rate of the corresponding definition of limit for a function of of mark, for a function of a vector variable. So this is sort of similar. It's not directly using that, but it's similar. Okay. Okay. So this is now the part which we have to think. So we have what do we have? So let's bring that out. So we want to use this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the beginning is easy. F of x minus f of c. What comes in place of l? What are we claiming the derivative is? The uh -huh. vector b. And now we need to multiply by x minus c. But we have to be careful. What kind of multiplication should we use here? These are both vectors. We want to multiply and get a scalar because that's what would make sense to add and subtract to fx and fc, right? These are both scalars. So what, what kind of multiplication of vectors gives you a scalar? Dot product. The dot product, and that's what comes here. What will come on the right side? Epsilon. Epsilon times x minus c. So, okay, now that we have this, let me just say a bit more. So, on the left side, all these things are scalar. So, fx is a scalar, fc is a scalar, v dot x minus c is also a scalar. You're subtracting and then you're taking the absolute value. On the right side, x minus c is a vector. You're taking the length of the vector and then multiplying by epsilon. Can we do that? Can we uh can we go from the 
the naive expression directly to to this. Are you saying that? Are, are you yeah. saying you want something simpler than this? Oh uh, no, not simpler. It's just it seems to um, seems to be manipulated. Because you want the left hand side to be a scalar, and then it's a dot product. Well, and you want the right hand okay, side so, so, to so be a scalar. I, I just give like a very sort of uh, very uh, quick and dirty reason why you should get a dot product. That actually is a more sophisticated ways of thinking about why this thing should be a dot product. So it, it wasn't just that I just picked a dot product randomly because it worked. There, there's a deeper reason for that. Okay. But 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 I but I just gave you like a quick and dirty explanation of why why the dot product would in general make sense. Okay. What what we what we're basically trying to do with this is is okay, let me let me say it like this. So we are basically trying to say that 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 v times that v dot x minus c is a close approximation to fx minus fc. So if you're looking at how fx differs from fc, that's closely approximated by v dot x minus c. That's essentially what we are doing. In the, okay, what we would like to do up here is we want to say that v closely approximates this quotient, mm -hmm. right? But we cannot say that because this quotient doesn't make sense. So instead, I'm saying v dot x minus c closely approximates this, and how closely does it approximate? As closely as you want if x is close enough to c but that that's the idea and and the reason why you can, why you have to sort of do it this way is because you cannot directly divide any other questions no okay great